This exotic trading post of bygone times derived its name from the banks of the river upon which it is located, Saigon. In 1859, the French arrived and transformed this then growing city into the capital of French colonial Indochina. With nearly six million inhabitants, this city that is also known as Ho Chi Minh City, although large, is no longer the capital of Vietnam. Following the eventual withdrawal of both the French and the Americans, the city has prospered once again. With a lively trading spirit and a special flair that has helped it to become known as the Paris of the East. The charm of early colonial times has been well preserved to the present day. Such as the impressive facade of the city hall and this monument to Ho Chi Minh. And also one of Saigon's most well-known landmarks, the Opera House that was completed in 1899. A splendid building in colonial Baroque style with seating for 800. The Ho Chi Minh Museum commemorates the country's great leader as the national hero who gradually steered his country to independence. In 1911, a young man called Nguyen Tat Tan worked as a kitchen boy on a French passenger ship bound for Marseille. He returned to Vietnam after 30 years and led his people in their struggle for independence. As Ho Chi Minh, he led the revolution against Vietnam's colonial masters and finally on the 2nd of September 1945 became the first president of the Republic of Vietnam. In remembrance of this, tanks and bomber aircraft are exhibited around the presidential palace. The Palais Norodom was once located here, the palace of the French Governor General. History was made here. Bao Dia. Vietnam's last emperor was dethroned by the Catholic Ngo Diem, who was in turn assisted by the Americans. During this uprising, the splendid colonial building was badly damaged, but was later rebuilt on the orders of President Diem. Diem was killed in 1963. Most of the rooms are now as they were in 1975 when the palace was taken by the Viet Cong. Including a central office on each subterranean floor with old-fashioned telephones, huge computers and maps hung on the walls. Tiny bedrooms and endless neon-lit corridors indicate the privations of the Vietnam War. The palace has now been transformed into a museum. A mighty colonial building of 1883 highlights the splendor of old Europe the post office. With its colorful glass windows and cast iron gratings and balustrades, it's more like a European train station than a post office.
From here, the country's great leader, Ho Chi Minh, surveys the huge, brightly illuminated hall, along with its various counters. The History Museum was built in 1929, according to Neo-Vietnamese design, and features a large range of fascinating exhibits from each epoch of the country's history. Statues, pottery and other artifacts of various epochs are on display in various atmospheric rooms. They range from the Bronze Age culture of the Dong Son to the Funan, Chen La, Khmer and Cham periods, as well as various Vietnamese dynasties. Ancient battles are exhibited here and there's an interesting collection of mummies. A journey through a thousand years of colourful history. The museum has a total of 14 exhibition halls, each of which covers the most important epochs of the country's history. The former National Museum is now of international status. The Botanical Garden was created in 1864, also during French colonial times. It contains hundreds of old and gigantic trees, along with well laid out gardens that boast numerous tropical plants and artificial lakes. A splendid park with greenhouses and pavilions, located in the centre of the city. There's also a small zoo with elephants and various other animals. It's very popular and attracts those who want to escape the constant hustle and bustle of this busy city. The Jade Pagoda, the temple of the Jade Emperor, highlights the country's religious faith. From outside, the two buildings look somewhat plain. Although the temple was built in 1909 by Chinese from Canton and is dedicated to the Taoist Jade Emperor, Buddhist gods are also worshipped here. The interior features Taoism in all its splendor, with an earth god, a gate god, numerous guards, white tigers and a number of green dragons. Dao means way, origin, nature and primeval principles. The term originates from the Chinese religion and demonstrates the fundamental ideas of Chinese religious belief. The king of hell looks out from his red horse, flanked by the gods Yin and Yan, who punish the evil and reward the good. Stern judges survey the ten hells of Taoism. It was here that it all began, at the junction of the Bengyi Canal on the slowly flowing Saigon River. The cathedral once used to greet those who approached by ship. It once overlooked the flat roof buildings and nearby marshland.
The Vietnamese first settled here in 1674 and called it Ben Nghi, the key of the water buffalo. Today, huge container ships from around the world lay anchor here and offload their immense cargoes, both day and night. The river is the city's lifeline at its junction with the South China Sea. The city's busy riverbanks demonstrate its constant energy and dynamic pulse. Today, Saigon is experiencing a massive property boom, and its city center premiums now match those of both Singapore and Jakarta. Here, past, present, and future live side by side in this richly cosmopolitan city. The city's largest church is located in the center of the administration district, Notre Dame Cathedral. It was consecrated as the Church of Holy Mary in 1883. Its lengthy and bright interior was constructed in only six years. However, the building was not fully completed until some time later. On Sundays and festive days, the Mass is so popular that the congregation spills over into the front yard. Here, Catholicism is enjoying a new lease of life. This red brick building of neo-Romanic design with towers that are over 40 meters tall was built in the area of the Royal Citadel. The Ben Town Market is Saigon's largest market. It was built in 1919 and is covered by a huge dome. The clock tower is one of the city's main landmarks. Covering 11,000 square meters, the market houses the largest quantity of products in Vietnam. Everything from clothing, electrical goods, to an amazing array of food. Both fruit and vegetables are beautifully displayed, a pleasure for the senses. Haggling takes place, and tiny kitchens inspire a healthy appetite. There's also fresh meat and poultry, and a large variety of fresh fish. In addition to Buddhist temples and Catholic churches, Saigon contains various other sacred buildings, such as the impressive Mariamman Hindu Temple. At the end of the 19th century, a small group of Tamils built this temple that was closed during communist times but was reopened in 1990. The Vietnamese are very tolerant in matters of religion and find here the ideal opportunity to select the appropriate goddess for their prayers. The Van Hoa Park adjoins the area that contains the former presidential palace. It's popular with the local people an oasis of relaxation. The exclusive Cercle Sportif was once situated here. But today, the Sport Club of Labour, with its 11 tennis courts and open-air swimming pool, is open to the public at large. In addition to various tiny pagodas, 
There's also an open-air stage, numerous cafes and several fountains dotted around the park. There's plenty for children to do here as well. At weekends, the amusements are full and everyone takes time out to relax. Southwest of the city center is District 5, the old Chinese quarter of Jolon that originated at the end of the 18th century. The name Jolon means big market. A lively commercial district with many family businesses conducted in crowded shops and narrow lanes. Although thousands of Chinese were forced to flee due to political strife, Jolon has retained its Chinese character. From early in the morning until late at night, both tradesmen and cooks are kept extremely busy. A wonderful place, full of noise, color and exotic aromas. The wealthiest temple in the heart of Jolon is dedicated to the patron saint of seafarers. The Tian Hao Pagoda, built by the Canton Chinese in the 19th century. Huge coils of fumigants hang down from the ceiling and send their messages to the gods. The messages are written on small pieces of red paper and burned in the coils. Richly decorated wall paintings tell the story of the Queen of Heaven. The faithful purchase special offering money in order to burn it. And then they set light to scented spirals to grace the gods of Chinese mythology. Young visit the War Museum to learn of the country's saddest chapter of recent history, the Vietnam War. It's a terrible story of death and destruction. Following the assassination of Diem, who was an ally of the Americans, chaos began to spread across the whole of South Vietnam. One coup d'etat followed the other. Until after further escalation, the US Congress authorized that the American army be sent to Vietnam. On the 8th of March, 1965, the first GIs landed in Da Nang, and more than 500,000 troops followed in subsequent years. Fourteen million tons of bombs and armaments were dropped from the skies and 40 million litres of the poison gas Agent Orange was sprayed across the land. In 1975, the Americans vacated Vietnam, but their much-promised financial support came to nothing. The history of the Giac Lam Pagoda can be traced back to 1744, when a small temple first originated here. This pagoda is not only one of the oldest in Vietnam, but also one of the most beautiful. Its courtyard is used as a meeting place during various festivals.
The roof of the main hall is supported by 98 wooden columns and is decorated with white-blue china and embellishments. In this Buddhist Taoist sanctuary, it is not only Buddha and the favorite pupils of Shakyamuni who are worshipped, but also Kuan Am and the mystic Jade Emperor. The Ten Kings of Hell are masterly carved works of art. They stand guard over the righteous. Here one's duty and moral consideration is of the utmost importance. The mystic philosophy of Lao Tzu is also featured here. A complex system of numerous virtues allied to a simple lifestyle that is undertaken in harmony with nature. Traditional ceremonies are extremely popular in Vietnam, such as the wedding ceremonies that are alive with both music and dance. The beautifully dressed bride is escorted by her family during the festivities. Such events often last for several days and several entertainers perform their numerous skills. A time of family, of friends and much celebration. One of the highlights is when elegant female dancers perform a flower dance until the bridegroom finally leaves with his bride. Traditional Vietnamese dances are performed in the royal show. The serene ritual dances of the royal court are performed by women. Both costumes and mime typify each character. And the melodies combine Chinese music with the melodic music of the cham. The Fen dance is the highlight of each performance. Elegance, rhythm and the harmonious interaction of the group make the performance something really special. Both music and acting have a long tradition in Vietnam and are closely related to each other as theatrical performances are usually accompanied by music. Both are strongly influenced by Chinese culture. However, the music is also influenced by Indian music and it was originally introduced to Vietnam by the Cham. It is said that music and dance reflect the character of the population. Thus, the Vietnamese are a very charming and fascinating people. A long struggle recreated the city's past prosperity. A struggle that has proven to be well worthwhile. Located in North Vietnam since the beginning of the 1990s, Hanoi has been unable to match the prosperity of the South. Saigon's dramatic past began with it being a small fishing village, followed by its development as the Paris of the East, and then as an American garrison city, until it eventually became South Vietnam's modern metropolis of today. Saigon has now well and truly come of age.